What is going on everyone? My name is Joe and this is Different Take. If you're new to the channel and you want to see more movies explained, movie rankings and lists and movie reviews and pretty much all things movies, start now by subscribing and clipping, uh, clipping, clipping the bell. Start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss out on any new content. Let me know in the comments section down below what you thought of Creep. If you haven't seen it yet, you definitely should. It's on Netflix, so just hopefully you'll go watch it. And also comment your favorite horror movie character, like the villains, like the antagonists, like Michael, Freddy, Jason, whatever, because the character in Creep is a character. Creep. No, not that creep, but that is a good song. Yes. Creep is a 2014 independent found footage horror slash dark comedy, like a blend of those two, and is the directorial debut of Patrick Bryce, who co-stars in the film. The film was produced by Jason Blum from Blumhouse and Mark Duplass, who stars in the film alongside Bryce. So here's the story. The film follows Aaron, played by Patrick Bryce, who's a videographer who answers a Craigslist ad created by Joseph, played by Mark Duplass. I'm assuming you're Aaron. Yeah. Joseph. Joseph explains to Aaron that he was diagnosed with terminal brain cancer and wants to film a video diary for his unborn son. Man, seems nice. However, as Aaron begins filming, he starts to suspect that Joseph is not exactly who he says he is. Or is he? Why do you look scared? Don't be scared. It'll all be over soon. Oh my god. 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 I love this movie. The film focuses on characters. It's like a character study. And it focuses on mood and tone, as opposed to like special effects and CGI and blood and gore, which are par for the course these days in mainstream horror slasher flicks. What's so impressive about Creep is that it puts us, the viewer, in the same position as Aaron. So not only does the viewer see the film from Aaron's perspective, from his point of view, due to the you know, POV style, found footage style, but to some extent, you may end up responding to Joseph as Aaron does. The same way that Aaron wants to trust that Joseph is troubled, but inherently good, us, the audience, whether you want to admit it or not, you're hopeful that Joseph, on some level, won't cause any harm to Aaron. Or at least if he does, that he's just troubled and he's not really evil in his intent. Mark Duplass is outstanding in this movie. I'm a big Mark Duplass fan anyway. I just, anything the guy does, I'm just a big fan of. I think he's really talented and he's funny and he's a good actor and he's, he's got a lot of range. I think he produces good stuff with his brother Jay Duplass, with Duplass brothers. I'm just a big fan of his. Okay. Joseph's facial expressions and the puzzling behavior, it really contributes to the tension. And it's really important to the just uncomfortable, unsettling nature of the film. At times, it's really uncomfortable to watch. I mean, you're just kind of like, what the fuck is going on? Joseph? <laughs> <laughs> Joseph is scary, but let's not forget Peach Fuzz. You gotta love the Peach Fuzz song. Hello, my name is Peach Fuzz. And the Peach Fuzz dance. Uh, Peach Fuzz. I love how he's like, well, it's just Peach Fuzz. Oh, that's Peach Fuzz. Oh yeah, it's just Peach Fuzz. That's, it's just Peach Fuzz. Just a guy in a wolf mask just dancing around and singing. Yeah, just Peach Fuzz. It's just Peach Fuzz. You want to trust Joseph because it's a familiar face. It's Mark Duplass. That friendly face can kind of trick you and sort of make you think something that's not actually there and their intentions are sort of, hmm. Duplass actually stated in an interview that the film's story was partially inspired by the, quote, a rod of strange Craigslist experiences over the years. This makes the film seem very realistic as we all at some point in our lives have known a few people who invade our personal space and or share intimate details or just come off a little Creepy. Now, unlike most slasher or supernatural horror films, Creep humanizes its antagonist. We actually get to see and talk to him. I've complained in the past about horror movies and slasher flicks showing too much of the monster or of the antagonist. They're just, you know, sort of following them around, but that's when they're sort of like, you're, they're trying to hide them, but they still show them too much. In this one, they go in the S opposite direction and it's really, new and fresh and it's it completely i would never expect to see it in a horror movie they you follow him everywhere 
because of the nature of the film, you're literally going everywhere with the antagonist. Everywhere. And it's just, uh, we don't trust Joseph and he makes us uncomfortable. It's an understatement. But like Aaron, now that we know Joseph on some level, at least we think we do, we really don't want to believe he's as sinister as we suspect him to be. It's really fresh and original, and I would never think to do it in a movie like this. And it's, but it's brilliant because you're just, you can't take your eyes off the screen, no matter how uncomfortable it is. You're like, oh my God, what the hell's happening? You need to get out of that house right now. The film gets most, if not all of its horror, not from the blood and gore, but instead from the uncomfortable interactions between the characters. On top of the strange dialogue, there's long periods of silence during the characters' conversations that contribute to the general unease throughout the entire movie. So to that point, what is unseen, unsaid, and merely suggested is what terrifies us most. And it's really impressive. The director, Patrick Bryce, he intentionally uses these techniques to his advantage. This is one scene in particular that I just, I never thought in a million years this would be in a horror movie, but they really pulled it off extremely well. Aaron pretends to turn off the camera when Joseph says he needs to tell him a story to get something off his chest. The screen goes black and we're sitting there watching the movie and you're left with only the audio and the subtitles, leaving you wondering, what the hell? Why can't I see what's going on? Uh, what are they doing? What exactly is going on? What's happening? Now, the absence of any on-screen action forces us to focus on Joseph's words and tone of voice. It heightens the tension of the scene. We listen and we read every word, every disturbing detail, and it figures that the story is really, really disturbing at the point in time when we have to not only listen, but actually read the words on screen. His monotone and his emotionless delivery adds another layer to an already really dark, dark scenario. But what makes Creep really special is its understanding of its audience. Chances are, if you're watching Creep, you're likely to be your typical horror buff. You're well aware of the genre's tropes and conventions, and you know how things go in these movies all the time, whether it be good or bad. With the director, Bryce, he seems aware of this. Like Joseph toys with Aaron, at the same time he's doing that, the film is toying with us, the audience. If you're anticipating a long, slow burn scene followed immediately by a jump scare, the film might go there. Hi. But it also sometimes holds back and completely subverts our expectations. Justin, I think I'm gonna head back. If you're trying to figure out the film's next move, like Aaron is trying to figure out Joseph, the film is already two steps ahead of you. And I gotta say kudos to Patrick Bryce and Mark Duplass who came up with the idea and co-wrote the film together because this is really an accomplishment. Considering the predictable nature of how mainstream horror films are, or just the film industry in general, this was something original and they took a chance on it and they really came out with a gem. I love this movie. Creep is such a clever, unnerving thriller. A slow burn approach that it keeps you just squirming in your seat and you're just uncomfortable. And at the same time, jump scares keep you on the edge of your seat. The film is an excellent character study because of the solid writing and the top-notch acting. They completely switch up the horror genre and do something completely different. You ready for this? I think Joseph is gonna go down as an iconic horror character. I'm gonna call that right now. If he doesn't, it'll be a crime because this character is so interesting and just unpredictable. And it's so memorable because the film is funny, it's scary, it's just unnerving and unsettling, and it's it's all of the above. And it's so goddamn entertaining. It's got a high audience score and critic score on Rotten Tomatoes, but even that, I still don't think it's talked about enough. I think this film is so good. Go see this movie right now, like right now. It's on Netflix. I highly advise you to go watch it. I love it. There's actually a second one which I didn't want to tell you about because I didn't want to ruin the first one, but there's Creep 1 and Creep 2. They're both on Netflix. Go watch them. And they're going to make a third one. Should I even say that? Because that's going to ruin the second one too. Anyway, if you like this video and you're feeling generous, hit the thumbs up button. And for more videos about everything movies, make sure to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. And I will see you in the next one. Thank you, Selena. Take it away.